You need to have like these pool of characters. That's why you're seeing so much today between Jojo, Pokepen, Luke, Kloon, bring out so many different characters. Because I think like if you have that pool, you know, you don't have to think about too many matchups. You can just pick the one that's more in favor, or at least more even, right? Yeah. And there's like, I, I always think that like you should at least have a triangle, right? Three characters that kind of like, you know, may maybe like a heavy, you know, a zoner, yeah. you know, a rushdown character, things that can kind of like uh, not only do good in the matchup, but also say if you're that cracked, you can make sure your opponent is ready for anything, right? Yeah, 100%, because you've got that the typical rock, paper, scissors, exactly what you mentioned. The grappler, heavy, you know, whatever your archetype is in this game, grapplers are always a little nebulous. And then the rush down and the zoner. Pokemon was talking about earlier that they definitely wanted they wanted to try out the pit. They tried out corn earlier, but pit has been definitely on their radar. Yeah, I mean, with the results of pit players like Zachary most recently at Genesis, for example, pit's starting to yeah the return back a right. Bit, right? The return he was playing the character before right. he took his in Japan, break, but now he's coming back with it. That keeps happening in this game. Every time everybody's like, "Oh, the game's dead." There's like five viable characters. Some cracked player comes out. But you out see with the, like, the, these these new characters. Characters or these returning characters come back into the fray, and you're like, oh wait, these are threats. Just like Snake is a threat too. And I'm kind of interested in this matchup too because you know you have the nature of how Pit's aerials work. They're very multi-hit use. Are they gonna able to eat through the grenade and hit me? Keep hitting Snake because I feel like that's gonna be a boon for Pit in a way, right? <laughs> yeah, it, it's, I think going to depend on what their neutral engagement distance is. Because Pokepen is now playing a character who wants to be at like poke range all of the time because his poke range moves are just absolutely busted and that is the opposite of what snake wants so he's going to be running away though then again up tilt range is a very simple range because that moves crazy untackled and we're seeing like the strength so far right we have the ability to edge guard snake make them force to either tag or get untackled right there along with these arrows these arrows is very pivotal oh and eating through the cypher too okay that is huge for ryan in this matchup take a little bit of damage, but it's fine if you come back to stage as Snake. Yeah. I'll take that any day of the week. 10 damage for a free return to stage? Yes, please. But in a lot of matches, you can't abuse that much armor in the Cypher because the multi are pretty weak. In this case, you can. Yeah, I don't know if there may be some situation where, like, all hits of Nair or Fair connecting is, like, just enough to break it. But it doesn't matter the way Pokepen's playing with the two frames in the corner. It was kind of nice. They are getting a ton of mileage out in this matchup for sure. And also, yeah, this is so good using the or the Orbiter, right? The Orbiter is going to be so good about, against like denying these ledge trap scenarios as well. Remember I was talking about that up tilt range from Ryan. The key to going in like this downward 45 degree angle. Come on, this is man. the goofiest matchup. It's working out. Oh, Ooh. you know what? Yeah, we're getting a little, a little bit of goofiness. <laughs> That one hit so hard, the peanut gallery went, oh. You want to get on too, baby? Come on. Fair, guys. Get, get on here. Come on. You want to commentate? <laughs> Meteors will always be hype, JoJo. I don't know what you're talking about. Give me that Falcon you, Yeah, you should see Falcon and Melee. Like. I don't care how many times you hit me with that move. I'm still, it's still nasty. You're still sick with it. But he's got a lot of ground to make up. Pokepen clearly showing us the pit is real. Also, I'd like to say shout out to Smash Wins. Anyone who's been watching that this week, I had no idea that at some point I beat Pokepen. I don't know the story of that, but I found out this week that apparently I've beaten Pokepen. All I know the story is right now, Pokepen taking it over Ryan there. What a great snipe on the arrow. Yeah. And like we talked about earlier, the arrow's put in mad mileage. The chat does not like me. Important information. LJ said that his, his hat is his hair. His hat is his hair? Yeah, so the beanie is his hair. I, I don't follow this. That's all you need to know. Bro, what? What? <laughs> What? He's, he's getting mixed up pretty hard here. <laughs> Anyways, back to the match! I'm so, con I'm so confused. <laughs> I, I did! Yeah. Man broke my ankles and I'm sitting in a chair. Well, let's see if, if Pokepen can break some more ankles here in this matchup against Ryan. Yeah, Pokepen is poised in a pretty solid position right now. We are in best of five territory, so lots of opportunity to Ryan to come back. 
He is very good at adapting. He's got a great mental. I always love talking to Ryan about this game. But Pokepen seems to be just staying one step ahead, especially off stage. Yeah, we're starting to see some adaptation. We talked about the arrow earlier, and now we're seeing that like Ryan is trying to abuse the crouch to get underneath these up aerial approaches and whatnot. But that's when Pokemon starts coming with the dash attacks. Yeah. I do feel like a big factor for Snake players is we talked about earlier, it's a thanks for trying to play the game character. If you're up against someone who is able to still, despite that, force their will on you, like Pokepen is off stage and in these neutral interactions, it's so easy to crumble if you don't have your bread and butters to fall back on. Or if you're like not understanding how to like handle the advantage and disadvantage state too, because you have to play a little bit differently against Snake when you have the grenade in play. And also, you have to learn how to deal with going high up like that on Snake. If you can't deal with Snake going at that high up with Cypher, then that's like half the battle, I feel. Yeah, 100%. Like that determines a big chunk of matchups for Snake. It really does. The high Cypher is like such a go-to for him in these kinds of matchups. And Pokepen, very good at scouting out those landings, but still, it's returning to stage in exchange for getting hit by an aerial. Like you take that any day of the week. Ooh, he had the opportunity, but Pokepen didn't Interesting Nikita, for sure. That was kind of scary. I think he thought that uh, Pokepen was going to run at him, but instead he faded away. Okay, once again, going high up this time. Pokemon trying to meet, even though they did not get the full touch of the up air right there, was there to scoop him up. It kind of worked out because he got to reset the situation, but in the end, Ryan does get out of that. He gets back to stage. And the now, grenade saving Pokemon. And what's worse about that is now you're trading, and you do not want to be trading when you're a stock down like this. No, and now we're going to see Pokepen taking that stock from Ryan there. But 90%, like you're saying, Latini, there is a lot of, like, lots of me being made up on, uh, like, Pokepen's side. It's such a spooky situation to be in. But he is back in this fight, and one side effect, well, it may be good when you're up a stock with those grenades. Once you get into this kind of situation, even though you're up in percents, since Pokepen's already at 4%, you don't really want to be trading with grenades anymore. Yeah, I, I was talking about this also with Combo earlier, is that it starts becoming a more of a liability. Like, your your best tool is kind of like, becomes a, a little bit worse asset. In some, yeah. depending all on percentile, right? It's still gonna be a great way to make sure, you, like, to force your opponent to play how you want them to, but the utility is still on Ryan's side as they will be taking it above Pokepen right there. 81%, can we still on the stock? Oh, almost got that ledge roll, but Pokepen, he's playing so carefully, which has served him incredibly well. But there's been a couple situations like right there, if he had faded in a little more aggressively on that back air, we'd be in a different situation right now. Oh yeah, so close. And now we're seeing Ryan start to throw these grenades a little bit faster than usual, because like you said, can't hold on to them because if they get hit, the trade right. is not going to be in their favor. No, it is not, though. There you go. Finally, evening it up. This is what Pokepen desperately needed in that scenario. Now he gets to get his early percent combos, and it's going to be even percentages in a second here. Yeah, with Snake like that, you have you have such great potential, especially now that these trades come back in a line to make up the damage. 81% though, this is a great chance for Pokemon to make this comeback. Don't let you have from... Oh, dodge was crazy! Ryan does love to use those dash attacks in the corner, so I'm not surprised to see it. But Pokepen, using that momentum, look at how much he got off of a single spot done. That's how tight this game is. Once again, the dash attack coming out just like you were saying. It's gonna be a little bit more aggressive, Hopefully that antsiness doesn't come back to bite them. 93% to 117. We are so back and forth. Like oh a my uphill. god. Yeah, we are definitely back into it there. Using the dash deck once more and Pokemon trying to get the punish but a smidge too off means free up tilt for you. Thanks for playing the game. Thanks yeah, yeah. Th thanks for trying to play the game. Oh, what's neutral? I have the, this cool move. It's up on the C stick. I use it always. My favorite thing with snake players is when they try to cover a whiff up tilt with another whiff up tilt. You basically play the mini game of how many up tilts do you think they're going to do. It's kind of a litmus test for some people. It's like, are you ready to punish? If you're not, I'm probably to go for it again, right? Yeah, it's so safe if you're not actively going in for the punish. Depends on which hide, the side you uh, hit on the shield too, because yeah, and how good your grab range is and how good your out of shield is. So in There's a way, a it's a good way to test in a matchup. It also makes it a little tricky to find counterplay because there's no like universal Twitter tech of this is how you de deal with snake up tilt, right? 
because there's, like you mentioned, those grab ranges, what your approach options are. And in this matchup, Pokemon has a lot of spacing options with those swords. It is in that happy-go-lucky neutral range for him, but he needs to be ready for it nonetheless, and that time around, he just wasn't. Of course, we do have a change of scenery here. It's going to small battlefield, too, which gives a little bit of chance for Pokepen to make sure that Ryan is not going to get any free pulls in these grenades without taking any kind of extra risk to it. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Right now, Ryan does have that fragile lead, but the keyword is fragile. You saw how well Pokepen was able to bring it back in that last game. If he just gets another flash of that momentum switch, but that's all it takes. That's kind of what like Ryan wants to, is to go you to thinking, all right, you can just jump from ledge and hit me with an aerial. No, you can't. The Elf Smash is there to cover me. Yeah, you haha, you thought. <laughs> and that's kind of the nature of Snake, right? There's so much pressure that seems unsafe, but you have ways to make it so. It was also DI-able if Pokemon yeah, had been perfectly ready for it, but, you know, unfortunately... Can't be ready for everything. You just get caught. You're, you're holding forward because you're running in trying to punish Snake, and then that gives you the worst possible DI, so... You just H box yourself into the blast zone, and now 152. Yeah, this is, this is Ryan good. might be going down. Yeah, yes, yeah four throw taken out there. Okay, the shield wiggle, the shield wiggle. It's been happening a lot today. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the it's like the new uh, wave dash back or like crouch or crouch. You yeah, know? I've been seeing a lot about the key charges in Tekken this past week. People are getting heated, and I don't mean in the good kind of Tekken yeah, yeah. way. <laughs> Yeah, I like it. I love the patience he's got for Pokemon, too. They didn't want to bite at any of the, the pressure that Ryan was putting on. Starting to see Pokemon spacing a little more with the back air in neutral. So now he's switching it up. Maybe he's just trying to be a little bit more unpredictable. Mixing up that forward air, that back air, that neutral air. But Ryan seems to have found the spacing that's working for him. And the way he's throwing out these grenades is making it so hard for Pokemon to safely approach. Yeah, and unfortunately, Pokemon has to cut off their combo a little bit short because they can't overextend, otherwise they risk just, you know, taking the tray with a grenade. Yeah, and the other aspect that we see Ryan using so well is the fact that those grenade hitboxes are slightly bigger for the opponent. So he's standing so close to them. And Pokepen can't challenge that or a blow up. And as soon as he does, you get comboed with the up air and you just die. And a nice thing in this matchup too I'm seeing is that like because you have the natural extra jumps with hit, you're able to get around some of these ledge trappings and also avoid these C4 shenanigans. Yeah, 100%. Speaking of 100%, Ryan now over 100% and at a slight deficit. That armor... Fortunately not working out too much. Which means that Ryan can keep going that for free. Yeah, and... I mean, I guard. Play. Yeah, well there he goes. Character hits hard. Nikita... One of the best moves in the game. Honestly, I think Nikita's better than the entirety of, like, Ganondorf. N you know what I mean? N Nikita can, like, just invalidate so many characters in this game because of the fact that you can edge guard without leaving the stage. <laughs> it is pretty crazy. And then you have the mix-ups where you pull it back to you if they're trying to punish, and then that you hits cir Circle around everything. Yeah, you're circle camping like, while standing. Even so. though there's counterplay behind Nikita, the Nikita can counterplay your counterplay. Yeah, 100%. 42. Yeah, we're seeing Pokemon go back into bear mode like he does with every single character, right? Ooh. Ooh. That's, 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 yeah, that's hard. That's pivotal. That's crucial, honestly. Because... Pivotal, even. Yeah, it might even be an aerial. It might even be an aerial. <laughs> that's but, crazy. But jokes aside, that's going to be so huge for Pokemon now because, in a way, he's kind of back in just if he gets one good series. And that spike hitbox also sucks. So good stuff to poke at for managing for to finding pull that it, off, right? right? Oh man, put all the ma magnifying glass. Look for that. You've got like two frames to do it, and it's the size of a peanut. But you found it. Speaking of finding things, and now you're running off stage. Flashes of the first game, Pokepen getting aggressive, cannot find the aerial as Ryan beautifully spaces it around him. Now we see the up tilt <gasps> coming out. There it is! Empty oh, hop no. into the up tilt to baiting out the get up attack. That was so impressive for Ryan. That's huge, yeah. I love this, the empty hop, Tomahawk up tilt. That's how you know it's a snake player. It's not Tomahawk crab, it's Tomahawk up tilt with this character. And I love that kind of mind game too because a lot of snakes will kind of just go into, say, like a near one, right? Which is beatable by the ledge game attack, but Ryan one step ahead, just like, alright, I'm gonna commit to nothing, and you're gonna do it anyways, and I'm gonna punish you. Speaking of committing, we saw Pokemon floating around on a couple other characters, but ended up going back to the Dark Pit. I don't hate this choice, it's just, like, it just kind of hard to clean it up, I feel. Like, Ryan's very good. So, it's not a situation where you're like, oh, he's just sandbagging with some bad character, no. like, no. That's a signature to Ryan's ability to adapt to 
these wild picks from Pokepen. Ryan, very in tune with his character, much more of a character specialist. Pokepen, the absolute antithesis thereof. Now, Pokepen in a weird spot. Ooh, he played it risky. I was about to talk about how he can't dash back onto that C4. Ends up going for it anyway, and Ryan doesn't pull the trigger. I like the idea of Pokepen, like, catching the grenades and just kind of throwing them down, making sure that Ryan gets no use out of them because the less tools he has in this matchup, the better it's to be for Pokepen. For sure. And now we're starting to see the up airs connect a little bit better from Pokepen. That could be a big momentum shift, but the drag downs continuing to not quite work for him. <laughs> hey, wow, that, wow, that was pretty impressive from Pokepen because we already saw Ryan crouching in the state where it was hard for the bear to hit, but able to still find him. Yeah, I can't believe that connected. I'd love to see the hitbox visualization because you know Pit has minuscule little baby hitboxes right. on that move. A great, great tech out there. No punish on the up B. Fun fact, did you know that up B has invincibility only while on land, uh, while you're on the ground? I did not. It's know a really that. dumb, like, just fact. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those things that nobody would ever think to do. This game has so many things like that where, <laughs> who, who programmed this game? Sakurai, what are you doing? That was, that's the lunch break move right there. Pit always known to be one of the few honest characters in the game by a lot of people's standards, right? Compared to when you're fighting a character like Snake. It is crazy that the character with three jumps is Mr. Is, Odyssey. Right. <laughs> he just doesn't have the sauce. But we'll see if Ryan, if Ryan has the juice to take it over Pokepen here. As I say that, Pokepen catching the roll back there with the fade back aerial. And now we are in this situation in the ledge that Pokepen has been so dominant in. These tech chases looking pretty clean, but you only get 21% because Pit, he just doesn't rack up damage like that. The side B call out. So. On the spot dodge too, I think. Okay, Pokepen, I see you committing to the bit all the way or maybe chomping there at, but the F tilt from Pokepen closing out the stock, easing things up. Speaking of commitment, yeah. Well, letting F tilt two kind of go after the first hit was already shielded. And the movement is starting to get a little bit more crisp at Ryan, too, which might put Pokepen off kilter. We'll find out. Yeah, we see how safe Ryan is spacing that. He actually connected with that down air, but he didn't think he was going to, so he faded back preemptively. Really speaks to him. <gasps> oh, you're not going to die, but how did he find two of those in one set? Man, that spike sucks. Another one? Yeah. That was the spike hitbox. Pokemon has the timing. Which means I think at this point, Pokemon can keep swinging like this because it's working out in more his favor more than Ryan. And there we go, Pokemon taking the lead, only 75% on. Yeah, cute little poke there, I like it, I like it. And now Pokemon still a little bit in back air mode there, not going for the combos, just trying to get this spacing, fighting his way back onto the stage. So crucial at this high of a percent. Easy tech, and he takes the turn away from Brian with that move. Wow, Pokemon is going off right now. Holding the arrow oh. for two. Are you kidding? Oh, okay. <laughs> the Swedish sniper coming back to us. All right. Oh, there we go. This time going with aggressive option now. Ryan was, all right, I have to turn on the gas. Put my, fettle, put my foot on the, the pedal. That gas, gas, gas going. 6 though. This is not looking great for Ryan. Pokepen has just gotten the download. He is winning neutral That's so it? much more consistently. And finally, finally a down air actually converts into something. We talked about it earlier, Latini, is that like in pivotal moments when pressure's on, Ryan likes to dash check right out of like the corner. Mm -hmm. Pokepen realized that and was able to like be right there with the short hop down air to make sure we get the kill confirmed. And he's built different. That is a good reminder for Ryan. He's got to make sure he keeps those mix-ups fresh, does not get predictable in specific game states, or Pokepen will catch those habits and he will punish him for it. It can be hard when you're under pressure, right? Like when you're when you're put in situations where it's just like, all right, I, I have to, to basically procrastinate my bad habit. <laughs> no I'm beginning to think Pokepen is actually having a character crisis between games and just doesn't remember where Pit is because he doesn't use him enough. He's slowly becoming Pit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Head empty. Alright, well we got the triple platform action coming up here, which can be, I think, pretty beneficial for both characters too in terms of like not only like Pit sharking, but the way you can place your grenades now too. 
Ryan is very comfortable on this stage though. We've already seen he's got those setups with the C4 and has gotten 100% off of it. Pokepen is going to need to step things up because this early momentum, just the early deficit is such a boost for a This is probably player. the biggest lead I've seen so far in the set. Oh no! <gasps> Oh, oh, please. Oh, oh, please. Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you come back? This is going to be yeah, so Yeah, absolutely. Tough. Yeah, okay. using the C4 to make sure we get the recovery back and turns the whole thing around, too. That was the opportunity Pokepen needed, but Ryan was able to evade his grasp. The forward throw not going to kill. Look at the way he used the arrow on that Nikita. And it, and it delayed him around as well. This is actually really impressive oh. Pokemon. Unfortunately, re grabbed the ledge, though. I'm so sad he died there because Pokepen just played out of his mind to last even that long. You're starting to see the reason why he's he picked Pit for this in a way, right? Yeah, he's got the flash, he's got the style. Just having all those tools that he can express is such a strong thing in the hands of a player like Shokopan. Nice. Oh, oh, almost got the extension is on too. Harry just kind of walk away. I like the disengagement. So disoriented because someone behind us has good game sound on and it's also a snake player. <laughs> it is. Okay, Ryan holding on to the stock for dear life here, Pokemon having full overtime. Shout out to whoever is behind me and just got like five grabs in a row with Snake. Whoever just lost to him, you deserve that. Did you hear like the, the gotta, squeeze sound? Yeah, I heard the squeeze sound. Like, you, you gotta hold that L. Speaking of holding L's, Pokemon, uh, until... Oh, yeah, trying to make a read for the okay. down smash. Predicting the roll away in okay. the corner. Hey, yeah, clean up that stock. Pretty a hard-fought battle that we have in front of us. I don't know what Pokemon was cooking there. <laughs> now you have to get past these ledge traps. We talked about the There it is, the fair thing, the thing that JoJo loves to see. You know? Yeah, that's JoJo's favorite move in the entire game. He Absolutely. pops off every time he sees that, actually. Close, close, close it all. <laughs> Pokepen's got a huge mountain to climb here. I don't know if he's going to be able to do this. Even a player of his caliber, especially in a situation like this, Ryan has really stepped up his edge guarding. No spike. Ah, Jojo crying. There he goes. Oh, I love the extension with the Nair as well. Like, yeah, Ryan is just getting all these extensions in all the right places, putting down more grenades, just making it more difficult for Pokemon. This is how Snake runs away with the, the C4s oh, we got, on him. We got him. The air dodge that timing was from Pokemon. so clutch. How did he know the timing? But it doesn't matter. You got down air. Wow, there we go. Ryan going to be taking okay. it over Pokemon. That air dodge was nice, though. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll, a flash of brilliance, right? In yeah, the heat of the moment. And you got the style points, Pokemon. I respect it. Looking really solid with that pit, but just not quite solid enough to get past Solid Snake himself. Yeah, Snake, definitely a slippery slope of a character, as you've seen in that last game, where Ryan just got the lead and kept it. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, Ryan showing us why he has 